Growing up as a queer person, I always tended to view my favorite video games through my own rainbow-colored lenses. It's inevitable. You always bring your personal experiences to the media you enjoy. So it's no surprise that as a teenager playing Devil May Cry 4, watching Nero and Dante's charged interactions, that I interpreted those scenes homoerotically. I was a teenager, I was gay, it was gonna happen. I never considered that Devil May Cry might have intended that reading as a possibility until much, much later, while researching the series. I found the Japanese development blog of Hideki Kamiya, written while he was working on the first game, and one line in particular had me seeing the entire series through a new light. While talking about a personal experience of his in one blog post, he concluded by saying that men that even men could fall in love with. That's what I'm trying to do with Devil. I was flabbergasted, taken aback, completely shocked. I double-checked my translation and double-checked again. Yep, the verb he used has one meaning, fall in love with. And he uses otoko, men. Not gamers in general, not players genderless. Devil, meaning the Devil May Cry series, is a project in which Kamiya was trying to create a man that men would fall in love with. Holy shit. Hideki Kamiya was the director of the first game, and though he wasn't involved in a major role in later titles, he was a major contributor to the lore and backstory. He established Dante's family history, his background with his twin, and the major story beats of DMC3. He's not a small player in the series. Which means, Devil May Cry is built upon the premise that Dante is a man that men will love. And well, he's not wrong, is he? Dante's all about sexual attraction, and for the Japanese, the lines between male and female attraction are less distinct. For many centuries, sexual acts had definitions, but sexualities as we know them weren't really a thing. Men could have wives, have sex with men, and unmarried women, as much as they wanted, and it was considered completely normal. It was tradition for samurai, the most powerful and virile of warriors, to take on male lovers. And even major texts about the proper way to be samurai included descriptions of how to best find and keep your boyfriend. I'm not kidding. Buddhist priests in Japan were so well known for this behavior that it was often said homosexuality was an import from China that the Buddhists brought with them. Modern Shinto rituals even keep some of this emphasis on borderless enjoyment of sexuality, such as this ritual that involves a man wearing a giant dildo assaulting a crowd of people, male and female, who are encouraged to pet his dick. So it's not a surprise that a modern Japanese man may not react with horror and shame at the idea of an attractive man the way someone in the West might. And that got me thinking about Devil May Cry and sexuality, and how the games really are incredibly homoerotic, and that apparently might be an intentional thing. So let's talk all about the homoerotic, sexual, incestuous, forbidden naughtiness of the Devil May Cry series. When it comes to male sexuality, there are a few obvious symbols that are associated with men across the globe. Phallic objects, especially violent ones associated with big tough warriors, like swords and guns. Devil May Cry has a plethora of huge swords and enormous over-the-top guns used in manners that evoke sexual imagery. But more specifically, Dante can't stop being penetrated by swords. It's a running gag among the fandom now. Dante just keeps being stabbed. He honestly seems to allow it half the time, and it's often at the hands of his own weapon. The enormous sword, a symbol of manhood, penetrates our hero again, and again, and again. Let's count it up, shall we? Not counting scenes that occur in battle or outside cutscenes, there are at least eight major scenes in which Dante is stabbed, often with his own enormous phallic blade. And the scenes themselves are incredibly overdone with sexual tension. This scene with Alastor focuses on how slowly and intensely Dante draws himself off the blade, in a way that throws his head back, mouth open in a panting gasp. This scene in his office has the young man half-naked, 
surrounded by monsters who he allows to violently penetrate him, before throwing his head back and gasping. Each time, the camera focuses heavily on Dante's physical reactions to the penetration, which mirrors sexual behaviors exactly. And Dante nearly always allows this to happen. Only rarely is he so overwhelmed in combat that he can't counter or stop his opponent. These scenes make it clear Dante is toying with his opponents, and on a certain level, perhaps even enjoying the horrendous violence of the scene. These are, of course, parallels to homosexual activity, but they're also literal violence being done to Dante. Dante is a half-demon, a monster, and we can't forget how much that informs who he is and what he enjoys. Full demons are shown acting in sexual manners in ways that imply violence, towards Dante mostly, associating sex and harm. They're demons. I wouldn't be surprised if they did the deed and then tried to eat each other. Dante, a young demonic man with no demonic partners besides his own enemies, can find this kind of violent gratification only at the hands of his enemies. This may be why so many of the most sexual erotic scenes in the series are associated with combat. In Japan, there's a major historical trend in fiction called Ero Guro. After the arrival of Westerners in the 1800s, the traditional Japanese sexual content, erotic woodblock artwork, was banned. Because the Westerners found it shameful and made the Japanese politicians feel ashamed of it. Good job, everybody. In response, new underground traditions started to form, and in the early 1900s, Eroguro would be one of them, a sexual tradition that blended extreme violence with sexuality. The modern tentacle fetish we all know and love began as an Eroguro fetish, and many of the art's traditions are alive and well today in manga and anime, and many of Devil May Cry's major cutscenes and its blend of violence with sexual innuendo feels like a modern homage to the genre. Now let's talk about Dante's interactions with his fellow male characters, who are, uh, all related. That's a major no-no for most Westerners, where the taboo against incest is very morally charged. Gothic literature is the main exploration of incest in fiction in the West, and as I explored in my previous video on the subject, Devil May Cry is heavily influenced by the Gothic. Japan, meanwhile, is far more comfortable exploring the concept of incest, hetero and otherwise, in all kinds of fiction. It's a question of two differences, a difference in literature and a difference in religion. On the one hand, Japan does not have a lawmaker-god concept, passes down a bunch of strict rules that say no no to sleeping with your sister. Because of that, the inherent sense of moral outrage, that God himself will be angry at you, just isn't there. The Japanese gods most likely would not care, perhaps because the ancient parents of the gods and the islands themselves, Izanagi and Izanami, were brother and sister, as well as husband and wife. It also appears very early in Japanese literary traditions, in ancient Heian Japan, where Japanese literature got its start, it was legal to marry family members as close as your half-sibling. So long as you weren't of the same womb, it was okay. Nobles across the world often used this idea to keep things in the family, so to speak. So it wasn't unknown for uncles to marry nieces or cousins to marry cousins. The difference in Japan is that the first major works of literature were written about the nobles meaning that it depicted fictional incestuous relationships as part of the story. In the tale of Genji, the main character marries his cousin to no fanfare. This was just normal. Later centuries, it would be far less normal socially, but the usage of the trope in fiction just never went away. It became a way to increase the drama, to add a sense of the forbidden, to emphasize how powerful this love was that it could overcome taboo, or to just titillate and surprise. The West feels too guilty to indulge. Even when gothic novels like The Monk used this trope, popular responses in newspapers and among reviewers was to condemn the work as blasphemous. So Japan just doesn't see incest as a no-go. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Much like murder and violence, it's not something they actually do in real life, but it's fun to play around with in fiction. And Devil May Cry is full of incest. Trish is a clone of Dante's mom, who he has some charged romantic scenes with. 
Nero is Kyrie's adopted brother, and he is outright dating her. So there's no problem with acknowledging canonically DMC is A-OK -okay with incest. That brings us to Nero, Dante, and Virgil, all of whom are directly related and have some very homoerotic scenes together, including some questionable dialogue. How about a kiss from you? When this is over, I'll make you submit, father. Let's examine the very first time Dante and Nero meet. They end up fighting, because of course. But the start of their battle begins like this. Nero leaps at Dante, feet first, throwing his legs open before wrapping his legs around Dante at waist level and an exact parody of sexual intercourse between men. In leaping at Dante to attack him, he flies at him dick first. Then Dante attempts to shoot Nero with his gun, a big phallic object, which Nero then bites with his mouth. Not one, but two sexual scenes are being mimicked here. Sexual intercourse, in which Nero is on bottom, and fellatio, with Dante's gun in Nero's mouth. They even spend the fight battling on and around a giant sword, which belongs to Sparta, their father and grandfather, and which Dante has thrown at his face. Then comes the end of the fight, when Dante allows himself to be beaten. The angles on this fight are absolutely wild, and they once again emphasize the sexual nature of the scene. Dante is made helpless, arms thrown overhead, looking up in surprise as Nero grabs him and pulls the man underneath him before sitting on his torso. Dante doesn't even try to stop him. He falls limp with his arms at his sides. These scenes are so intensely erotic, as Dante allows the younger man to use his body, even fighting off Devil Trigger, before the scene ends in his penetration. What is this scene? Can we also talk about how Nero's giant sword is an engine which he can rev by rubbing the handle repeatedly? Then there's the second fight that ends with Nero pinned and a close-up of Dante panting over him. Why these scenes, game? Are you doing this on purpose? Scenes with Dante and Virgil aren't exactly better. Their past history creates a violent tension between the two of them, and as we've said, violence and sex are intricately linked in Devil May Cry. In 3, Virgil has an entire conversation with his brother while shoving his sword in Dante's torso, while Dante hunches over, gasping. Then he stabs him again. Doing so, however, awakens his brother's power. Dante grows stronger from it, reinforcing the idea that for demons, pleasure, pain, and power are all the same. Neither of the brothers has a real canonical romance interest. Dante and Trish have some romantic tension, but it vanishes pretty quickly. Virgil has an unnamed female partner from the past who was Nero's mother, who was apparently so important to him he totally forgot her and never even considered Nero could be his son. They do have some sexual scenes with women, but they're always demons and always associated with violence. By comparison, Nero's scenes with his love interest Kyrie are gentle, sweet, and romantic. Perhaps behind the scenes, she's a secret power dom, but Devil May Cry draws a clear line between romance and sexuality, and how it portrays these behaviors in their demonic characters. Romance can be gentle and sweet, but getting down and dirty for demons involves a lot of blood and gore. Truthfully, the idea that the brothers might be involved, or interested in each other, or in men in general, isn't even the most forbidden sexuality in the series. We all forget that Eva, a human woman, essentially got down with Satan, an anthropomorphic embodiment of evil, and he probably didn't always have that handsome human mask on. Compared to that, what's a little gay incest? Now let's get meta for a second. Remember back during the development of the DMC reboot when that one guy at Ninja Theory said they were gonna make DMC better? And part of that was making Dante cool again, because he's not supposed to be a gay cowboy? I remember. And I also remember when Devil May Cry 5 came out, and, I, and it had a long, elaborate cutscene in which Dante, wearing a cowboy hat, dances a Michael Jackson dance routine, a famously homosexual artist, 
and the camera zooms in on him, grabbing his crotch. The subtext is out the window at this point, it's just text now. That isn't to say I think Dante is gay. I think he's a demon, and for demons, power and domination is way more important than gender, or whether your partner has a dick, or whether that dick is your brother. If it kicks your ass, that's hot. They're violent sexual, and all these sexual overtones in the cutscenes are intended to be fun, irreverent, sexy, and a wink at the audience, an acknowledgement that these characters may be read in a certain light. Japanese media tends to be ambiguous on purpose, whether it's a series like Silent Hill that won't give you all the answers, or a book that ends on a cliffhanger and lets you decide what you think happened. Japanese creators and audiences alike tend to lean towards fiction that is open-ended. It's a way to encourage audience participation, to in essence hand the reins to the player and allow them to interpret things how they like. The player of Devil May Cry can see Dante and Trish as having a thing, or Lady and Trish, or Nero and Dante. It doesn't matter, there's nothing canonical outside Kyrie and Nero, and Kyrie is so rarely on screen you can basically forget about her. The point of the games is fun, over-the-top action. Everything else is just gravy. So if you want to imagine Dante's getting down and dirty with whoever, go for it. The game series gives you full permission to have fun interpreting it to mean whatever they want it to mean. Go hog wild. Heh. <laughs> Happy Pride Month, everybody.